Hey guys, how are you doing? I hope you're doing well. I hope you're having a good time today. Today we want to build something cool. We want to use React.js and TypeScript to build a simple um, React application. This is really good and nice for people who have solid knowledge of JavaScript, but they want to learn how TypeScript works and they want to learn how they can integrate yeah, TypeScript into React.js. We will be using Vite. That's a really nice tool for creating React.js apps. And it's also supporting um, TypeScript out of the box. It's much, much faster than create React app. And it makes the development process very fun and easy and blazingly fast. Yeah. <laughs> All right, cool. Yeah, so let's look at our application that we're gonna build. It's a simple to-do list application. We have an input here. We can provide a to-do title, for example, and then we can hit enter. The input is cleared and we get a new to-do down below. And of course, we can also delete a single to-do like this or like this, and they are gone. Just a side note, it would be very cool if you would install a Chrome extension called React Developer Tools. Yeah, it's a very useful extension. It's a very useful extension that every professional React uh, developer should install yeah, and use. Very nice. And then we also use Bootstrap just for CSS styling. Here you see on this side, you can see the um, as a line for scaffolding your React.js application, but I will show you everything in detail. So don't worry for now. Um, that's it. Please enjoy the tutorial and have fun, learn stuff, get better. Have a good time coding. I'm here in my projects directory and here I will create a new React app using Vite. Vite is a super cool tool. It helps you to create React apps using TypeScript. And the cool thing about Vite is that it's very, very fast. It's faster than create React app. So that's why I'm using it. Um, we have to provide a name here for our React Chess project. I call mine React TypeScript YouTube. Hit enter and it's already installed so fast. And we can cd into our react.js directory and we can hit npm install. Next, we write code empty space dot. This will open our Visual Studio code in the correct directory already. There we go. And then we can do npm run dev to start our new react.js um, app. There we go. And it's already here, nicely running. Next, let's do a little cleanup. We do not need the logo. We do not need the index CSS. Uh, we do not need app.css. In main, we don't need this import. In app, we don't need this import here. We don't need the logo and we do not need all the stuff, but the outer diff can stay. Next, let's build our folder structure. It's very simple. We just have a folder called components in which all our components will live in. We will have a to do app.tsx file and I can do here RFC hit enter and I get a nice boilerplate. If you want to have the same functionality, I think you have to install a extension. <coughs> React snippets, I think this one here. And after you have installed it, you need to restart your Visual Studio code and then it should work just fine. All right, cool. Next, we need to create another component called to do a list. 
Celsius X. All right, and we need a to do item. We will start working with our to do app component. It is our parent component. The to do app component will contain the to do list component, and then the to do list component will contain the to do item component. But you will see it as we progress with this tutorial, so don't worry. First of all, I would like to render this to do app component. I can do it by importing it into our app.tsx. I just do angle bracket and then I do to do app. I can choose it here, hit enter, and there it is. And I already see it here. It's because in the main.tsx, we import the app component, which contains our to do app component, and then app is simply put here. Let's work on the output of our to do app component that we actually can see something on the screen. For that case, I will make a label with the text of please enter your to do. I give it a class name of text muted. And of course, I forgot something. We will be using Bootstrap, so we can style our app super fast and we don't need to use plain CSS for that. So you can come to this uh, site here, React Bootstrap, and then there's a link, you can copy it and paste it into index.html, maybe somewhere here. And you see, now the text uh, is grayish. And another thing before I forget it, it's very useful that you install one important extension. It's called React DevTools. This thing here, it's super important if you want to uh, develop um, applications uh, with React.js that you have this thing here. It provides you a tag uh, called components in your developer console of your browser <coughs> in Chrome and yeah you can see your app already here we have a to do app component which has no props at the moment and nothing yeah but as we progress with the tutorial you will see more and more stuff here appearing so yeah bear with me and let's keep going next to the label we want to have an input the placeholder or to do. Next to the label, we will have an input with a placeholder of to do. And let's give it also some classes of around it and p1. And what I forgot to say. The cool thing also with white is we have a fully functioning React.js TypeScript application now and we didn't even need to specify anything here. Everything is pre-configured and yeah, that's pretty awesome. So yeah, it's super fast to set up and also this thing runs super fast whenever you have a change and you update your code. It, it only takes a matter of few seconds or not even a few seconds and then it's updated which is amazing all right let's keep going okay then we also want to have a button with the text of enter and some classes btn btn slash primary yeah, that should give us a nice standard bootstrap button. And then we will wrap this div in another div. And this one 
in another div. Next, we can import our to-do list component. To-do list. There it is. Let's keep working on some styling here. Let's provide some classes to the inner di uh, div. Let's say the flex justify content center. Nice. Let's go to the second div and write down some class names. We give it a nice shadow. SM, small shadow. We say display flex and we say justify content between. And also we specify a width because at the moment it's 100% of the screen. That's too wide. So let's provide an uh, inline style. Style. And then we have style is equal to these brackets here. And then we write width of 500 pixels. Now it has a good width. Good. Let's go to the outer div, to the first div, and also provide some class names. Let's say the display flex again. Line items center and let's say MP5 here and flex column. I think I might have to move this to do list uh, in another diff down below. Maybe that it looks something like this here. Next, we can say that we want to apply. Flex column to our second div here. Flex column. Yep, so that the list is down below. Let's work on the functionality now. At the moment, we don't have any state in our to do app component, yeah, as you can see here. There's nothing. So let's change that. First of all, we create um, state here by using the use state hook and we want to have a to do and a set to do function be returned by the use state hook which we have to here it is important to specify something as you can see here um, use state takes a type which is undefined at the moment and due to this to do is also undefined. TypeScript does not know what to do is, but it knows what set to do is. So for this case, let's specify an interface. I export it as well because I want to use it in other files as well. So this is why I export it. And then we say interface and we give it a name of to do i. And this interface shall have a title property which is a string and it also shall have an ID which is a number. Now we can use angle brackets here after use state and provide to do ID. Due to this TypeScript knows that the to do is of type to do interface here and that the to do has to have a title and an and a ID. Alright cool. Now we want to set a to-do. We want to change the state of the to-do app. How can we do it? At the moment, if we look at our developer tools, we see state is undefined. Yeah, we see a state here, but it's undefined. So what we can do here is, first of all, we can say that the initial value or the initial state should be an object where the title is an empty string and then also the ID has a value of null. 
and I just provide a value of null here for the ID because later we change it, but for the moment it's okay. Let's see again. And we see we have a state here now with two properties, yeah? and this is the in initial state. Now we want to be able to change the initial state to whatever we type in here. And how can we do it? We can do it by creating a function. For example, on change, and this will be an arrow function, which takes in an argument, which is the event. Next, we want to trigger this function every time the input changes, and we can do this by using the onChange event. And whenever an onChange event is fired, we want to trigger this function. Now we see that this argument is of type any. We need to specify it. The type of this argument is the following. React.change event. And then we need to specify the, um, the element, which is an HTML input element. Because by default, it just takes um, an element, which is just very general. And it's better to specify a specific element here. Next, we simply can set our to-do here by providing an object to set to-do with a title of e.target.value, which is basically the value of the input here. And then we see we get an error here. We need also to provide an ID because we said it needs to satisfy this interface here. So it needs an ID. I could also make ID optional, then the error, error would go away. But here we will provide it. And the error is gone and everything works perfectly. Now we can look again in our React DevTools. We see the initial state here. I can type something now and we see it changes. Beautiful. Next. I want to work on the enter button functionality. Every time we click enter, we want to add a single to do to an array of to do's and then pass that array of to do's to the to do list. Okay, we create a on enter function, for example, which will be an arrow function as well. It receives an argument, which is the event, and this event has a special um, type again, it's a React mouse event. And this is enough. We could speci specify it further, but for this case, it's enough. Then what do we want to do on enter? We want to do some logic, but for this, we need to create another state. So, so let's say const to do set to do should be returned by your state. And this time, your state takes not to do i as type, but to do i array. Meaning it takes an array of objects that have to do i as type. And here we can see now, TypeScript knows exactly what it is, but we see to do i array or undefined. And this is because we didn't specify an initial value here, which is just empty, undefined. We want it to be an array initially. And now we see undefined is gone. Beautiful. Next, we can go back to our on enter function and we can set our to do's. We can say set to do's. We can use square brackets here. And this has to be set to do's. And it has to be set to do here as well. Here we can spread in our existing to do's. At the moment we don't have any, but we will have some soon. So we create a new array which contains all the previous to do's, but then also our new to do, which is this one here, our current to do, which we were typing. Next, I want to do something here because our to-do has no ID at the moment. We need an ID for the case that we want to delete a to-do. So it's important that we assign an ID 
to our to-do. And how can we do it? We just can use a simple function here to generate an ID. Yeah? It's a number between um, 1 and uh, 100 or 99, I don't know, 99 I think. We can use this as ID. So instead of passing in the to-do like this, we can do brackets like this and then say title is title, uh, oops, is to-do.title. And the reason why I didn't put this line in here to the on change function or in the on change function is on change runs every time I type something. So every time this would run and create a new ID. How I have done it now is it would only create a new ID whenever on enter is triggered. And on enter is only triggered once when I click. So this is better to put it here. And we assigned a standard value of just zero and then we changed it to yeah, a number of this. Now we can take this on enter function and trigger it when uh, on click event happens and write it like this. Beautiful. Now let's see what happens in our React Dev tools. To do app, that's where the state is. We see we have um, our current to do and we have an empty array. Now let's hit enter and nothing happened. Oh, and oh, it, it happened. All right. There you see we have our to do added to the array. Next, I can create another to do or two. I click two times <laughs> and there it is. It seems to work. I have also some errors here, but I think they are no current errors. Yep. They were old errors. Nice. Now that we have the to do's in our to do state, yeah, in our to do array, we want to pass them to to do list. So that to do list can output each to do item. Let's work on that now. So to do list should eventually be able to receive um, the to do's in form of props. So we that we can do something like this. At the moment we get an error here because to-do list does not expect anything. <clears throat> Let's make sure that we can pass in the to-dos as props to to-do list. For this case, we have to create another interface. Interface to-do list props. And we say it has a property to-dos and it's of type <coughs> to do I and array. It's an array of to do I. And that's why I exported it from the other file so that I can import it here. Why do I create a new interface? It has the following reason. reason. Later, I want to have other properties here as well. For example, a delete to do property, which will be a function. <coughs> All right, let's keep going. Next, our to-do list component should receive the to-dos. We can destructure them, so we don't have to write props.todos in the component. And then we say to-dos is of type to-do list props. There we go. Okay, let's make sure that our to-do list component can render the to-do items now. So let's make sure that we import the to-do item component. We have to use the angle bracket. Now we can import it. To do item, close it. And what we want to do now is we want to use the map function and higher order function from JavaScript. So where we can return a new array. We loop over all the to dos. We get each to do as argument here. And then we want to return a new array which is an array of to-do items. So we have to take this and put it in here. So now I should be already able to print out each to-do, but at the moment each to-do just prints out to-do item because it does not, because it's not actually rendering the title of the to-do. Okay, perfect. In order for the to-do item to render this the title, we need to pass the, 
to the single to do down to to do item. Let's do it now. To do is equal to to do. Now we need to make sure that to do item is able to receive the to do. We go here. We can do the structuring again and we get the to do here. To do is of type any. So let's implement an interface here. Interface to do i, for uh, to do item props, and it will have a to do property which is a to do i. And again, I create a new interface here because eventually this to do item props interface will have another property which will be um, a delete to do function. Yeah? You will see it soon. So let's take it and sp uh, specify it here. Beautiful. And now let's make sure that we um, show the content of each to do actually. We can do it by just saying to do dot. And again here we get nice all, um, autocomplete. Let's show the title. And there we go, we get the titles of each to do. Let's also give it a bit of a styling class name. We make it a card. We say my2, p2, a bit of a padding. We say dflex and flex row. So that we can also put a button here. It's the text of x. And the button will be next to the to do title. Nice. Next, we give some classes to the button. BTN, BTN danger. Yep. And we say MS Auto to push the button to the right. Let's test the app. Write a new to do. Maybe hello, blah, blah, blah. This doesn't make any sense. <laughs> okay, but doesn't matter. There it is. Nice. It seems to work. Now let's work on the delete functionality. For this, we go back to our to do app component, our parent component, and we create another function. Let's call it const delete to do. It will be an arrow function as well. And it receives the ID as argument, which is of type number. Next, we want to get all the to do's that were not deleted. So we basically delete one to do from the array and return um, an array with the remaining to do's. So we call it non deleted to do's, for example. Deleted to do's is equal to to do's filter we use filter here to filter out one element and then we say we want to keep all the elements that have an ID that is not equal to the ID we pass in this is basic basically what we can use filter for it's a higher order function you could say because it takes another function as argument and it returns a new array and with all the to-dos that had not the ID that we pass in. Then we can say set to-dos again to update our state yeah, and pass in non-deleted to-dos. No, <laughs> non-deleted to-dos. <laughs> all right. Next, we have to take this function and pass it into our to-do list component and we call this delete to-do. Delete, delete to do. And again, we get an error here. So we have to go to do list and we have to specify that we have a function here called delete to do, which is just a function that returns nothing. But this function receives an argument, an ID, which is of type number. Now we can edit here and you will see we will get nice autocomplete here delete to do there it is nice next we have to pass this delete to do function the reference of it 
down to to do item that's all we have to say delete to do delete to do is equal to delete to do we go into our to do item component and by the way you can do it to go to the component by hitting control and left mouse button and then you are in it next we can specify it here by saying um, delete to do will be a function that returns nothing takes an argument an id which is a number and we can add it here delete to do now let's make sure that whenever we click on this button the delete to do function fires so we say on click provide brackets and say we have a function here that returns our delete to do dot id next we have to make sure that whenever we click on this button here on this delete button that then um, our delete to do gets run i should say that's a better uh, word for it uh, it runs the event gets triggered the on click event gets gets triggered and then it makes this function run so we can say here on click and what we want to achieve is we want to run our delete to do dot id function all right cool now let's see if it's working we can create some to do's there we go doesn't make any sense but we have to save some time here and now see we can delete each to do works perfectly there's maybe a few little things here that are a bit annoying you see the can click the button and create a to do with an empty title we can do some conditional rendering here that's some easy stuff we could only show this button if we have a to do dot title here in our to do app component so we don't see a button if there's nothing in it and then when i when we put something in it all righty pretty cool and also another thing i just see whenever i i create a new to do the text states here this is not a nice user experience we can simply change it going to our on enter function and below set to do's we just say set to do to an empty to an object where the title is an empty string and also the id is zero i guess and now it should work and we see it seems not to be working somehow here and it is because we need to make our input a controlled input and we can do it by providing a value property here and saying it should be equal to to do dot title and now we have full control over this input every time we, we create a new to do it is cleared again after we hit enter that's basically it it was a very simple application which makes you a bit familiar with typescript yeah just with simple stuff but the simple stuff also helps if you never have done anything with react and typescript i think this was really useful for you i hope so at least thank you so much for watching this tutorial and see you in the next video have a great day